Hello everybody and welcome back to another layer by layer tutorial. In today's tutorial, I wanted to show you guys how I put together this enclosure for this week's project, which is a mini time-lapse camera. It is using that $12 mini spy camera module, uh, which is pretty cool. So check out this project if you haven't already. I'll have a link down below and I'll have an annotation as well. So in Fusion 360, I put this case together and it's pretty neat. Um, I, let's see if we can animate, got a little animation here for you. So um, this just is going to show all the components and stuff and how they're inside of the enclosure. So it's a two-piece enclosure, really cool, and all of the components are really kind of compactly tightened. Com they're, they're in the enclosure very tight, so it's a very small enclosure, and there's little, little room for uh, anything else, so it's kind of neat. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you guys how I put it together. There's uh, some things that you needed to have access to like the slide switch and the micro SD card, the camera lens and the USB port for the, for the trinket, which is right there. And another thing is, uh, the case itself has these little kind of snap fit nubs is what I call them. So if you look at the edge of the case, you can see that there's these little triangles that kind of protrude out in the inside of the walls. And with those two, those actually snap into, uh, these little kind of, indentations on the lip of the cover. So these are really cool. You've probably seen me make these before for like the, the pie grill case and various other projects. So I did it in this project and I'll show you guys again how I built it. I think I found a, a, a little bit faster way to do them because they do take a little bit of uh, steps, but uh, it's fine because it's definitely worth doing them uh, for your projects because you don't need any screws or any glue to hold the two pieces together. They stay locked together nicely and you can still remove them too. Uh, so it's pretty awesome. So let's get started. I have a blank document here. One thing I'll note real quick is that uh, all these components I've drawn, pre-drawn in, uh, in Fusion 360, obviously. Uh, the Spy Camera um, does did not, it's a, sort of a, it doesn't have any tech drawings at all. So I had to kind of draw these out by hand and guesstimate, but it ended up being pretty good. There's two chips on the bottom, and this is actually a flex PCB. This little, this little square here is a flexible, not PCB, a flex cable. Uh, there's even a little microphone here, which I won't be. Use I'm not using it in the project, but I, I do. I did draw it in case somebody wants to use it in their project or something. Uh, so that's it for that one. So let's go ahead and bring in all these objects uh, into this document. Now, if anyone from Fusion is listening or somebody knows how to do this, I want to. I want a way to to kind of add multiple documents. See how I'm shift selecting and they're all selecting. It'd be nice if I could right click and say insert you know, and insert all of them, but I can't do that. So I have to do one, one by one, right click, insert into current document. I don't care where it is right now. I'm just gonna hit enter because I have a bunch of these to do. And enter, maybe that's why, because when you imp when you insert something, it right away tells you where do you want it. I just want it there for now because I need to get these in here. Um, and it's kind of slow sometimes, but that's okay. Insert into current document. I know there's a lot of things going on in the background, so maybe it's not as quick as I would like. So everything's in here. We got the trinket, spike camera, slide switch, lipo backpack, and the battery. Everything's all over the place. Cool. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the main assembly. This is the main assembly, by the way. See that? I can I can close it and hide it. it hides everything. This is where everything's gonna be built. So I'm gonna make another component in here and call it case, because that's where we're gonna work from the case. And you notice everything got grayed out because this is now active. This little button here means I'm active. So with this active and I start doing changes and extrusions, it's all gonna get added to this area here. So I'm gonna go back out, activate the main assembly and you can see everything again. Uh, so that's just a quick uh, thing here. And you can see that all the um, all the timeline stuff of us importing it is in here. And when we go back into the case, all that disappears because there's nothing in this yet. So the, the timeline is sort of, or you have an option to change that. Do you wanna um, hide all inactive features is, is the thing. So if I uncheck that, you can see uh, everything goes back there. So maybe maybe that helped you. All right, I'm going to put hide though because it helps me kind of keep everything uh, uh, nice and neat, I think. Okay, next thing is now that I have the case active, I'm actually going to make a sketch. And I want to draw on the on the flat plane here, but I, sometimes you can't reach it. One quick way to hide everything, I hit escape, by the way, is to uh, click one object and hold down shift to select a series of them. And then you can use the, the hotkey V to hide everything. How quick is that? It's a lot faster than having to click on all these individually, which I just did, but... Hey, it's it's still easy to do that. 
So with that case still selected, create sketch, let's make it on this floor here. Okay, next I'm gonna make a rectangle and I'm gonna start from, yeah, I'm gonna start from here and then move this up. Uh, I'm gonna make a, I don't know how big this needs to be, right? So I'm not gonna add any numbers to it. I'm just making a, squ a square. Let's stop sketch and then I'll bring back everything again just to kind of see where everything is. Okay, so obviously that was way too small. We have some degrees of freedom here so I can kind of move this around like that, which is neat. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start moving things around. So I'm gonna go back into the, the main main assembly and I'm start moving things where I think they need to be. So at this point, if you're, if you're working on a new project, think about what components, uh, what, what, yeah, what objects on the components actually need accesses, access to. So obviously I need access to the, the, the USB port. So that needs to be close to an edge. The, there's an SD card slot. I need, I need to be able to get to that. I need to be able to get to the slide switch. And um, that's pretty much it really, I think. Yeah, so I'm gonna start moving stuff now. So looking on the top view, I'm, what I'm gonna do is just kind of move things so that they're kind of close to each other. So they make sense a little bit. So I'm gonna move the spy camera, click on it in the browser and then hit M, which is the, the short key for moving. I'm just gonna move them using the arrow keys. Uh, there's another way to move them um, like this with this button here, but I don't like doing that because it gives you uh, doesn't give you even numbers. Uh, so I, I don't like to do that. Next thing I'll move is a trinket. Move it up somewhere close to it. Doesn't really matter where yet as long as we get something. Um, let's do the backpack next. Um, just by looking at the, where the JST connector is, that's where the battery plugs into for the LiPo backpack. Uh, it's, it's, it's pointing that way. And I don't, I don't see myself having it good there because it's, the there needs to be a little bit clearance for the actual connector from the battery so i need some clearance there i think it's better if i rotate it and it's facing away from all the components so something like that next is the slide switch so the slide switch is in a upright orientation it's kind of wrong i kind of want this surface to be flat with with uh with the the grid here so instead of moving it and rotating it we can use the line tool to quickly do that so i'm using the line tool and um, I'm gonna click on the center of it, and that's locked. Uh, it's set to object. Obviously, if you couldn't select it, it's probably set to body, so make sure it's set to components because it, it is what we're moving. And two is already selected, so now f uh, from is selected. From there to somewhere over here. And you'll notice that it didn't move it there. It just flipped it uh, on, on, on where it thinks it needs to be. So I'm gonna use this flip button here to flip it the other way. So now it's flat. Uh, and oriented kind of where we want in, in, a, in a way. One thing to know about that, that, that a line does not get added to your timeline. It just doesn't work that way. So the next thing I'm gonna do is click on the slide switch and actually move it. And what's funny, I, I have to rotate it anyway, so why didn't you just rotate in the first place? It was just to show you the alignment feature, which is pretty neat. So I, I, I know I want it to be somewhere up here because I already made the project, but if you didn't, you could figure out, oh, it, it won't work over here or over here. Because it just kind of adds, the way, the the position of all these objects makes sense because it's as close as I can get them to. And you wonder where the battery, where does the battery go? The battery is a little bit different. I actually put it on top of the trinket and the LiPo backpack and um, it worked out well that way. So I'll show you how it worked out. I actually have this like that, and then I make sure that there's enough clearance from the bottom of it. And obviously you can see there's an intersection stuff, so I'll move the, the trinket backpack back some, down some, like that. That way I ensure that any K, any wires that get connected here uh, are okay, and there's plenty of clearance and stuff, so that's good. So now that you look at it, it, it looks pretty compact. I think this is as compact as we can get it. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty darn compact. We could move some things here, like the trinket, the battery, and the LiPo backpack. You wanna move all three objects at the same time. I already have them selected holding by using the Shift key, and then I can use M to move them all at once. So something like that. All right, that's looking better. Now, here's our original sketch, remember? So if we wanted to kinda of be within there, we can select all of our components and hit the Move key, and then move them within that boundary. Which is, which is kind of good. All right, so the next thing is, um, you're gonna notice this little guy here. It's This is a new 
uh, it's not new. I'm sorry. It's it. It wasn't here before we started moving things. So this position, uh, this capture position and revert position, they only appear when you actually move a component. Because in Fusion, you you need to be able to create a snapshot of where all these components are relative to the grid, relative to each other. So I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit capture position, and that gets added as a feature inside of Fusion. So anytime you start moving things, um, I recommend sticking to adjusting this position. So if I wanted to move something, go into that, and then you'll notice that you don't have access to create sketches. All you can really do is align and move things. Um, and that's because you're capturing a position, not, not capturing features, if that makes sense. So this is sort of going back into that and then moving things if you want to. Uh, is better than, I think, adding a whole bunch of these capture positions. So it keeps things nice and tidy. I think I heard a talk on, on, on Fusion, like having a bunch of capture positions is, 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 is can, can lead to a lot of problems later down the line. So I recommend doing one and, um, and only one if you can. So, okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify the sketch so that it's relative uh, to, to, the, to the PCBs and stuff and the components. So watch what happens when I edit the sketch. Whoa, everything gets thrown all over the place. And this makes perfect sense because when we when we double click to edit a sketch, it's actually going back in time when that sketch was first made. So that makes perfect sense. So one thing we can do is actually stop the sketch and the, one of the great things about Fusion is that I can actually just grab that feature and move it in front of the capture position. So now when I go into the sketch, it's ahead of the time. It's in the front of the timeline, so that means all the stuff is already positioned and, 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 and good. So that's awesome. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to project in uh, the surfaces from all the components. So for example, the the trinket here, I have it selected. I just clicked on it. I'm going to hit P on my keyboard for project, and that's awesome. It projected it in there. It has some holes and, and all the, the board shape. I'll do the same thing for this guy here, the trinket backpack. Let's go ahead and do the camera and the switch. I did the PCB of the camera. I'll, I'll do, uh, I just want a square from here. So I'm just going to do these edges and then this edge here like that. Cool. So that's awesome. So now that I have those in there, I kind of have reference points uh, for creating mounting areas and creating distances for the overall dimension of our um, of our case. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start off with this guy. So I can I can assign some constraints saying uh, the edge of this should always be a certain distance between that edge. And uh, for this one, it's actually going to be two millimeters. And what I'm using here is the dimension tool. It's actually under sketch. It's called sketch dimension. And that lets you uh, define dimensions or yeah, it lets you define dimensions, but it's not just for adding the length of something. You can tell it that you want this to be a certain distance between that edge, which is awesome, or probably better at this edge because it's, I think, more outside than the trinket is. So let's do that. So I want that one and that one. And now it's saying that there's a sketch constraint. You see that, how it's not letting me do that? It's saying it's, it would be overdriven. I'll tell you why it's doing that. Because when we created the, 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 the rectangle, um, we put it right here on the dot. And it created this little guy, which is, if you look over here, it's a coincidence. It's a constraint. So I can select that. You see it's blue. I'll hit delete. And now I have degrees of freedom. So I can say I want that edge to be a certain distance between that edge. I'll say uh, 2 millimeters as well. See how it moved? Yay, because we got rid of that constraint. Let's do it for this guy next, two. Yep. And then from here to the switch, these be, I think, two as well. We can, we can adjust these later. They're just to kind of get our sketch defined a little bit. And I have no idea how big this is in terms of length. I, obviously, I could find out. I could click on one and look down here. It says it's 52.502. I would never know to click that, but because I'm using uh, this method of using um, the dimension tool and projecting sketches, now I can kind of uh, create this custom crazy number of a length and, and it's all kind of dependent. So here, here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm gonna go ahead and extrude. Actually, let me let me show you why why it makes sense to do that. So let's say we want to go back into our design, and we want to move the trinket, for example. I want to move it drastically, going up, and hit OK. And then when you when you move things again inside of the you know how we're editing the capture position, you have to, you have two choices. You can either cancel that, revert it, or accept it. I'm going to accept because that's all we're going to do. And when you do that, look what happened our sketch dynamically changed because it doesn't have a defined number. All it knows is that I need to be a certain distance from that edge because you told me to via a constraint. So that's awesome. That, that's going to help us out tremendously when uh, making a, a case that we don't know if the, if the part should be there or not. So I'm going to undo that. And it moves it back there like that. And I think that looks pretty good so far. So here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to activate the case and I'm going to extrude this out to make a box. So I'm going to hide all these guys, again, using our, our awesome shortcut. And now I have all these, these profiles. Now, I, don't select all those things. Don't select everything. Just, just use, a, use a window selection under here, select. Make sure it's a window selection. And then, you know, you can do it one or two ways. You can go this way, select it. But I find it better going this way because it, it, it selects more things, I think. Well, with that selected, I'll hit E on my keyboard and extrude it out. I don't know how big it needs to be yet because I, I don't have my, I could, I could turn these back on and, and, and try to figure out how tall it needs to be, but I don't know yet. And because Fusion's awesome, I can just, um, I'm just going to put 10 and I'll, I'll be able to adjust this later. So I hit OK. So now you can see now we have two things. We have the sketch that we drew and then we extruded it out. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to active components and I'm going to hide that case. I'm going to show you something that we forgot to do in the beginning. Look how all the components are, they're not flat and they're not lined up with each other. They all need to be flat with the grid. The only thing we did that to was uh, this guy here when we reoriented it using a line. So I'm going to use a line again to fix everything. But before we do that, you got to make sure to go into the position that we captured. So capture position, go in there. You're, you know you're in there when you can't like make sketches and stuff. So you're in there. And now I'm going to use the align tool and I'm going to go to like the center here on the, on the trinket and I can't click anything right what's the, what's the deal with that well we can use our origin tool bring that in bring our origin tool bring our origins in and now I can select one of these origins so I'm going to say right there and remember since it doesn't know uh, since there's not another object to snap to it's just going to snap to wherever it is and then just go down with it so that's pretty smart that's exactly what I want Hit okay I'm going to do the same thing with uh, this guy here Align, click on that plane, and it looks like it didn't do two yet. Not sure. So, so Fusion's messed up right now. Let's try that again. Let's uh, hit Align first and then select the object, and then hit that. There you go. So make sure you, you hit the Align tool first, I guess. So for the for the this guy, we actually need to do the not this surface, but the actual chip because the chip is is um uh, is going to be touching the floor of the enclosure. Okay, so align this chip and then that plane. Cool. Okay. Now if you look at it from the front view, you can see how everything is nice and flat with this, with themselves. They're all equal. One last thing I'll do is probably oh no, I think that's fine. The uh, the 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 battery obviously. So the battery looks okay. It looks like there's plenty of room. Looks like there is. Um, click on that and click on that by holding on shift. There's a distance of two millimeters. That is plenty of room for a 30 gauge wire to go underneath there because there will be wires underneath there because we're going on top of the trinket. So I'm going to hit, now I need to hit uh, accept that, accept that position. And that's it. We've, we've made everything nice and, f and flush with, with uh, the floor of the enclosure that we're going to make. So let's go ahead and bring back the case. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is activate it because I'm going to add a shell. And the shell will create a shell and create walls and stuff. So I'm going to select the top of this box and then hit the S key to bring up the model toolbox. I'm going to type in shell, enter, I'm going to make it one millimeter, hit enter. And you'll notice that um, all of our components are now on the bottom of this intersecting with it. Because if you look at the bottom, when it created that shell, it actually created it, you know, moved it up, not outside. We could change that, but. Uh, I'd rather just do it here and then go back out to the active component, activate the main assembly, go into uh, our capture position, select all of them, and then just move it up by one millimeter because that's how thick 
our thing is. Hit OK. Capture position. Pretty fast if you if you if you know what you're doing. Um, I'll turn off Origins for a second. All right, so one I'll go back into case, activate that because I want to keep messing with it. Obviously, it looks like um, if you want to add some fillets here, I always love adding fillets to my my enclosures. I kind of can't do that now because like it breaks it. That's not cool. So what we can do is step back one, like that, before we did the before we did the shell, and I can add fillets this way. And instead of clicking one by one like this, I'm actually going to uh, go to the front and then click and drag to make a marquee selection like that. And now I can say I want a three millimeter, maybe even four, make four millimeter. No, let's do three <laughs> and hit enter. And now when I step forward, the shell gets applied and all those fillets are, are great. So you'll notice that when you do a fillet, the, the inside radius always is different than the outside radius, depending on the thickness that you added to your shell. So that's cool. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is probably work on uh, adjusting this a little bit more. So one thing I'll notice is I actually want this face here to be flat and flush with the edge of, of, the, of the slide switch. So what I need to do is actually go back into the sketch here and then change this to, uh, I believe, one millimeter and then hit OK. And now that's perfect there because um, what we're doing here is uh, we're going to poke a little hole here. We're going to do a hole cutout so that we can access and get to that slide switch to the little actuator. So that's cool. So actually, let's go ahead and do that now. So what I'll do is I'll make sure case is selected or active. I'm going to select then the surface that I want to make the cut for and then create a sketch like that. I want to project um, the, this surface of, uh, of the front of the thing. I can't do it right now because i got to hide it because it's in my way. So I'm going to hide the body that we just made here. And uh, I'll hit P on my keyboard. Actually, undo that. I had something selected. I don't want to project whatever was selected. Hit P on my keyboard, and then I can click on that surface there. And now I have uh, that projected in. I'll hit OK. And what I want to do is I want to make an offset of this. So I'm going to double click on that to create a chain and hit O. And then kind of drag this out. You see how it's, there it goes. It wasn't working because it was too in. So I'm going out, which is a negative value for, it thinks it's a negative value, so that's fine. I'm going to make it uh, one millimeter. Maybe that's too much, 0.5 millimeters. Looks good. And I'll, I'll cut this through by clicking on one of the things and hitting X on my keyboard. So that way I can select just that. And while we're here, while that's selected, why don't you just hit E on our keyboard and then start extruding it inward that way. Now it's speaking a box, obviously, but if we bring back the body, which is the enclosure, um, you'll see that it's cutting through there. So that's awesome. And to make this dynamic, instead of making it a fixed value, like, you know, five or six, I'm going to change the extent from distance to two object and then select the inside here. So now if we ever move anything, uh, Fusion's going to know that I need to uh, uh, go to this this inside wall and not some fixed number. So I'm going to hit OK. That's awesome. So now we have our cutout. And I'll activate this guy so you can see like all the components better. And that looks great. So now we have this little um, little opening for our slide switch that we can get to. We can dig our finger in there. And, and it's extruding out just a teeny bit so we can get to it. Awesome. The next thing I'm going to do is something similar but for the USB port on the trinket. So I have that selected. Oh, let me go back to case, activate that. Select that surface that we want to cut, create a sketch. Boom, hide the body because I can't get to it. And then hit P on my keyboard, select that, hit OK, double click on that, hit O for offset. It's set to one millimeter, which is exactly what I want. So hit OK. And before even hitting stop sketch, oh, let me uh, click on one of these uh, projected edges and then hit X so that I can make a construction plane out of it or a construction line out of it and then click on that profile that we want. Hit E on my keyboard, extrude it out, uh, bring back the body, change the extent to two object and select where we want it to go and hit enter. Awesome, so now we have this nice uh, clearance for our micro USB port, awesome. And the next thing we need to do is this guy over here for the for the micro SD card. So uh, again, I have it selected. Active component is good. Uh, create the sketch. Hide the body. And instead of selecting, because uh, this is kind of a weird shape, 
hit P on my keyboard. Instead of selecting uh, these little bits here, and you can go in the back of the component and just select that because it's the same shape but simplified. Cool. So I'll do a um, I'll hit OK, double click, O for offset. It's, it's saying, hey, there's an error. Can't do it. Well, go on the outside. There you go. Uh, let's make this um, a millimeter as well. OK. Let's break that um, intersection of our profile. Select it. Hit E. Extrude it inwards. Bring back our body. Change the extent to, to object like that. Hit OK. So now let's take a look at it. Now you can see we have plenty of clearance for our SD card to come in and out. So that's great. All right. What next? <laughs> next, what we're going to do is probably fine tune some of the edges here of the enclosure. I think what we can do is move this guy in more a little bit so that it, so that this edge is a little bit closer. So let's do that. Um, let's go back into the main assembly. Activate that so we can see all of our stuff. Uh, position. I'm in the capture position. And I'm going to move the slide switch back some. Back by one millimeter and probably down here. Uh, yeah, that might be too close. If we look down underneath, you can see I'm intersecting with the with the case, and that's not good. So let's go and move that back a little bit. So at this point, we're just kind of fine tuning all of our positions. And by having a captured position, uh, we're able to to do it quicker. You know what? I need to move it up some too. So I don't know if I really affected it that much. I think that's as close as we're going to get um, to the edge of the PCB. So that's not bad. Yeah. Okay. So now that we have that in place, we need to create some mounting stuff. Because if we, if we were to create a, a case and snap it on top, nothing is, not, you know, how are you going to mount everything? You could you could use tape or something like that. And and these components have mounting screws. Only only the trinket and this guy, uh, the, the, the Lego backpack, have mounting holes. But instead of adding holes and pins and stuff like that, th this guy doesn't have that. And neither does the slide switch. So what I'm actually going to do is something a little different that I, I don't do much, is, is create these little walls here that are pretty much pretty close to the edges of all the components. And with these walls there, I can basically snap the components into the enclosure by fitting them into those little cavities. Well, they're not really cavities, they're just like these little little walls. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, back inside of our case, activate that. Let's open up our... Let's let's start doing some, uh, some management here. So this is going to be called case, and this is called uh, case, which is like the bottom of the case. And this is our... Uh, switch cut. That's what I like to name them. If there are any cuts, I just call them what it is. This is a USB cut. And then I believe this one is the SD card cut. Sorry, that took a little bit, but that's fine. And that's good. Next, I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to go into that case and I'm going to hide all my components using that awesome shortcut V. And now I can start making those sort of shapes that will kind of create boundaries for our enclosure for our components. So I'm going to start off with uh, the trinket. So I'm actually going to start off from the edge here and click like so. And then what I can do is I can say I want that edge to this edge to be 0.2 millimeters away. That's a really good number to have like a little bit of clearance there. We don't want it to be exactly on there because there might be a little bit of extra uh, whatever on the PCB itself. And then I'll do one up here. Maybe have it connect like that. And say I want 0.2 over here. And I want 0.2 over here too. So we don't know what the thickness is. We could find out if we just click on it and look at the bottom. It's like, point, yeah, two, two millimeters, perfect, great. And then I can um, do a coincidence here with that. So that it's kind of lined up nicely. Okay. And I'll even do one here. So I'll say this to this should be 0.2. All right. 
And then um, we got that. The next thing I'll do is uh, probably one over here. Whoops, I hit E on my keyboard by accident. I just hit cancel and I'm back into edit sketch. So I can do another rectangle probably over here. Say I want point 0.2. Oops, let me undo that or just delete it. That to that. Oh boy, I'm all over the place, sorry. My uh, notifications are going crazy right now. Everybody's asking me things. Um, and then I don't want this to touch uh, this right here because I know there's a fillet there and then like a, a rough uh, edge is going to come out of there. So I'm just going to make this um, two millimeters. And it looks like um, we need something to cut here. So we'll do another rec. Oh boy. I'm going to do another rectangle here. And let's make it go that far as well. Let's say this to that needs to be 0.2. Same thing with over here on the on the uh, Pro Trinket LiPo backpack. And hopefully you guys can visualize with me on, on what where, where things need to be. So if you bring back uh, uh, some of these components, you can get a better idea of, of where everything is. It's kind of a it's kind of a mess to kind of visualize it, but um, if you keep looking at it, you'll you'll start you'll start seeing it um, with a, without all this detail and stuff. So um, let's make uh, one up here. I don't want this to go all the way down because um, if you look at the um, at the actual component, there's like wires there. So I'm gonna make this be point two as well. And this can kind of go out this way. This this should be probably two millimeters. And then there needs to be something for the switch. It looks like we're too close here. I think we are way too close, so 0.2. And then here, 0.2. This is what? 0.58, yeah, that's way too small. So I'm going to go back into um, stop sketch, go back into, you know what? I'm going to turn this on to hide the inactive stuff so I can quickly get to things faster than having to activate everything all the time. So let's go ahead and go to the slide switch and move it up by one millimeter, I think. That way it'll make it. A, a bigger number. I think it's like 1.08. That's good. That's fine. Cool. And let's do one for the switch over here on this side too. So this is really where all the kind of work is, is to is to make these little mounting things. If anybody knows a quicker way to do this, let me know. Because, I, I mean, this is just some of the work you have to do. And I think uh, probably instead of the trinket here let's make it one millimeter and obviously we need to move the trinket now because we have uh we're gonna we're gonna intersect the wall of the enclosure with the lens so i need to move the trinket so let's go back into that trinket and move that trinket but you can see how flexible it is right because of the way we built it you can move this by one millimeter you can you can kind of go in and out of the capture position and, and really fine tune it there I'm going to go back into the case, and I'm going to make it like 1.2 to give me that extra clearance necessary, just like all the other mounting bits that we haven't extruded out yet, but they're going to be extruded very soon, trust me. Um, That's looking good. We can start extruding it out, I believe. No, it looks like we need one for the trinket on the bottom. Oh, it's just one giant thing. So we want to extrude that. Ah, I see there's nothing... There's nothing really here. We want to get like all four corners or all, all four sides of every component should have a friction based thing. So that's why I'm moving things like that. I can bring this over here so that it's so it creates a more unified shape. And I'll do that here too. 
0.2. That's my magic number, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Everything gets 0.2. And this wall, too, needs, needs it. Uh, this right here, 0.2. All right. How about we start extruding some of these lovely mounting bits? So I want that, that, this one, this one, this one. There might be some inconsistencies with thicknesses, but we could always fix that. Not that, this one, this one. Looks like it might conflict. It might intersect with the with the with that guy there, but I think we, we can we'll be okay. Um, this guy over here. And this big guy here. Oh, looks like we need that one too. All right, so stepping far back enough, we can see what we're extruding out. Looks like a bunch of stuff. So let's hit E on our keyboard and start extruding it. Now, if we bring back the case, oh man, I guess I can't do that because uh, there's nothing yet. See that? Oh, okay. I just double clicked on it because because remember when you when you try to edit something from that sketch it was before I made all those things so all right so it's it's uh I'm gonna make it join and we're going to say it's it's one millimeter right it, since it's starting from the bottom that one millimeter doesn't go anywhere because that's still inside the the bottom of the case so I'm gonna add the thickness of each PCB which is about two millimeters so I'm gonna add uh. 2.8 millimeters and enter and now you can see I think it's about 1.8 millimeters tall which is fine because uh, the the enclosure the, the thickness for like this PCB here is about 1.6 the trinket's a little bit shorter but it's it's nice to be a little bit taller than the component just so it has that little extra room to fit inside and be nested inside so let me hide that case now and then activate uh, the whole assembly so we can kind of see here. So if if um, if we hide all the components now, you can kind of get a look at at the at what, what it looks like, and, it, and it's just like walls. It almost looks like a like like a house with a bunch of walls and stuff, like an interior. Kind of neat. So let's bring all those back. And what I'll do next is. Um, Actually, what I'm going to do now is probably end the tutorial, and in part two, what we'll do is we're going to add those little snap fits, create the cover, and finish this up. So that's what we'll do. I think that's okay. So what we've done so far is we, 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 we imported everything, we moved it around, we captured our position, and then we, we drew a, uh, a sketch based on uh, using... using um, dimensions and really figuring this out and molding it so that it's a really nice tight package so that's pretty much it for this one um, let me let me know what you guys think about it um, there's obviously a lot of work that can be done to to fine-tune and make sure that everything is uh, symmetrical and balanced and all these things um, if you have any comments or any suggestions please let me know in the comments below and uh, I'll answer any questions as well but I'll see you in the next one but until then I'll see you guys later.